Is that showing up correctly? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, great. Oh, so so this is me. We've already done the intro. And uh, the premise here is that um, you know Vault, uh, HashiCorp Vault is a great tool set. But all the other secret engines get the attention. I, I think uh, Transform needs some love too. Um, you know, there's a, often a lot of capabilities that are left unexplored. Uh, you know, many organizations we work with are either using the open source uh, edition or have upgraded to a supported enterprise or HCP vault, uh, but they've typically only just begun to take advantage of the capabilities um, that the platform offers. Um, you know, the, the typical starting use case is static secrets, stowing them in, in the KB. Uh, using them for their CI/CD pipelines and software deployments, uh, like the ones that Gilberto uh, just showed. Um, you know, and a good healthy segment of the market are starting to explore the uh, the power of dynamic secrets and are using Vault to generate credentials um, for components of their ecosystem dynamically and reducing the number of credentials that are out there in configuration files in the wild. Um, so they're reducing their risk profile and improving their operational security and, and providing audit trails and so forth. Um, but I believe Vault has more to offer. I think the, the Transform engine uh, needs more airtime so people can understand what this capability is, why it's useful, and that's why I prepared this short talk. Um, you know, while the title mentions API gateways, this talk isn't about exposing Vault services for consumption via the API gateway. We're talking about using Vault in concert with your API, API gateways and a bit of integration code to solve compliance problems and, and risk uh, management. Um, using these features is not limited to API gateways. Uh, these features can be used uh, by any developer that can consume Vault services. Um, so, you know, th this transform engine um, is, you know, currently supports uh, a couple of different types of uh, transformations uh, called FPE masking and tokenization. Um, FPE is, is a format preserving encryption. Uh, masking is, as you might imagine, the masking of data. And tokenization is substituting um, uh, data for other data. Um, in this talk, we're focused on the, the NIST standard uh, FPE uh, using FF3.1 for this example use case. and. Uh, this transform engine is included with Vault Enterprise with the Advanced Data Protection Module. Unfortunately, this isn't available in an open source edition. Um, so uh, uh, just to be aware that uh, if you try this uh, and want to try this uh, yourself, that you'll need to get a uh, Val key um, from our friends at HashiCorp and, and uh, tr to, to get, give it a go. So format preserving encryption. Um, you know, for, for some of you, this may be new. So for some of you, it, it uh, you know, maybe old hat. But essentially, you, you take the plain text um, and you encode it using Vault Transform. And the encoded value that comes out looks an awful lot like what you put in. Um, but it's, it's encrypted. And, and it's a NIST standard, and there are uh, cryptographic uh, features available to improve the key space used and uh, something called tweaks. Um, and then, you know, as you do this, you know, you store that encoded value in your database, and that lowers your risk profile um, because you are no longer storing the sensitive data. Um, you're, you're only storing a, a, an encrypted version of it. And then when you want to decode the value, you, you take the encoded value, send it to Vault Transform, and if you're entitled to decode, um, then you can get that uh, uh, plain text back. This um, sequence um, we, we think is quite useful as a transformation um, with your API gateway. Um, you know, a lot of um, uh, enterprises are adopting an API first approach to building they um, have API uh, management platforms and integration as a service platforms uh, uh, throughout their enterprise. And, and, and then each solution has an API gateway with an integration layer that's readily available or can be uh, readily uh, configured uh, to place an integration in line. Um, the purpose of this talk isn't to drill into any one specific uh, solution. Uh, we're talking at, about this at a, at a conceptual level, um, and then we're going to show you the feature 
systems in Vault uh, that support this. Essentially, when you have an API consumer going through an API gateway to the API producer on the right-hand side, you know, that typical flow, everybody uh, sees this if you're working with API gateways. And with a lot of uh, products, um, oh, by the way, super excited about the console API gateway uh, that was announced uh, by HashiCorp uh, early, uh, I think in October. And we just saw some bits uh, hit GitHub uh, this week um, uh, for uh, early access. So check out the console API gateway if you can. Um, but uh, when you, when you uh, transit through an API gateway, you have the opportunity to go through an integration layer um, that can then talk to the Vault Transform Engine to encode and decode uh, values. And then, and then uh, the idea here is that uh, by doing so, you're creating a barrier between um, your consumer and your producer and, and limiting uh, where sensitive data goes, um, which is just to the API gateway and the integration layer and through to the Vault platform. And the API producer doesn't actually see the sensitive information. Um, it, this uh, obviously is more complicated than that. You'd have to analyze your particular domain and understand uh, how this would work for your particular environment. But in this example, we'll show you how that's done. Um, because this is Sashi Talks Canada, I picked a Canadian use case example to, to show, you know, your social insurance number. This is a publicly available image from a museum. Um, so uh, no worries there. I'm not uh, showing uh, Charles Sellers social insurance number, uh, it's nothing to worry about. Um, but this um, uh, idea is that we have a nine digit number uh, that we all want to protect and, and don't want to leak uh, for fear of identity theft. And, and so what we might do with this is, is uh, use the HashiCorp uh, uh, Vault Transform Engine um, in, in order to protect that as someone submits it to an API, um, have it transformed before it goes to the API producer and is written into a database or perhaps logged. And, and uh, so how we do this um, is configuring the vault uh, for, for transform engine. First thing we do is activate the transform engine. Then we can configure an alphabet, which is a set of characters used for evaluating input and creating output. Uh, configure a template, uh, which uh, in our instance is a regex that describes the value, uh, the value capture and encryption. Um, configure a role, which is an access control construct provided during encode and decode operations. And then configure the transformation, which is information about the type of transformation, which template to use, and, and some other configurations, such as a tweak source. And, and this is um, uh, just all the steps you need in order to get started. We'll go through what each one of them looks like. The first thing you do is activate the engine. This looks a lot like any other secrets engine. Um, and you just do a vault secrets enable uh, with the transform, and it'll be enabled at the default uh, spot. You, of course, uh, would configure this appropriately for your environment. If you're using namespaces, et cetera, you would manage that the way that uh, you would. But for the purposes of the demo, we're, we're using a very simplistic example. Um, you create the alphabet. Um, here, we're just showing you what it would be like to create a numeric alphabet. There is a built-in uh, numeric that's equivalent and could be used for the use case, but we just wanted to show you what it might look like in case your use case uh, needed some special attention. Uh, and then next is templating. So we, we know that this um, input uh, value that we're thinking about looks like three digits three, uh, followed by three digits followed by three digits. And so we create this template, uh, which is a regular expression. And the, the, the brackets in the template um, represent the areas of the number that will be encrypted. Um, and and uh, this is, this is uh, pretty powerful. And if you, let's say, only wanted to encrypt a portion of the field because you needed another uh, part of the field to be open and available uh, for your um, uh, perusal and querying, you could uh, make part of the field uh, outside the brackets, and, and uh, which I think uh, there are some examples out there for credit card numbers where they want to still know whether it's an Amex or a Visa or a MasterCard. And so they leave the first six digits unencrypted. Um, but uh, still have uh, the rest of the card number encrypted uh, in order to prevent uh, 
uh, it from being abused. Um, so we create this template um, using Bolt Write. We uh, uh, name it, um, we tell it what it is, we tell it what the pattern looks like, and we uh, set the alphabet that we're using. And here, we create the role. This is the, you know, we're saying, hey, uh, we want to um, uh, create a path so that is going to be used uh, for these transformations. And that's what you'll use for your access control construct. And finally, we create the transformation itself. Um, here we say uh, vault right, and we uh, set the transformation name. We set the type of transformation. We set the template we're going to use. Uh, we set the tweak source, and we set the allowed roles. And so, uh, and this is successfully done. Um, and for demonstration purposes, we're using tweak source internal. This may not be the most appropriate option for your use case. So please refer to the documentation um, for the uh, FF3.1 tweak usage. Uh, this is available on the hash course site. Um, and, and uh, you can learn a little bit more about it. Once uh, that's done, your transform's active, right? Um, a quick um, um, uh, vault write uh, to the encode, um, uh, and you set the value, and it returns you the encoded value, and, uh, and, a, and a quick uh, vault write to the decode path uh, with the encrypted value, returns the original value and you can see very easily like readily how this could be very useful um, depending on uh, the scenario that you're working on in an api integration um, uh, you might uh, you, you know like access the encode on a post um, and then access the decode on a get um, and these are just some command line examples in in the um, uh, context of a, an integration gateway, you're likely going to use the API endpoints, um, and and so you would set it uh, your encode uh, uh, to the, you know your vault uh, address, uh, followed by the slash v1 transform to your path and encode, and then and then uh, the, the transform that role that we're doing, and then uh, same with the decode. Um, this, this is most typically what you'll be doing on the integration platform. And that looks as you would expect, you know, you, you would make the request, um, you know, provide the token, provide the data, and you get a, a response with the encoded value in, a, in your JSON response. And you marshal that and, and replace the values as required uh, on the integration platform. And same with the decode, precisely the same. And, and so with that, you can see how, uh, you know, an API a consumer to API producer without the integration of Vault, you know, the consumer will send sensitive information and the API producer stores and retrieves that sensitive information. But if you add uh, the Vault transform in the middle with the integration, you know, the, the API consumer will send that sensitive information, but the API producer stores and retrieves encrypted information. And, and, and what this does is creates a sort of a barrier. And, and so uh, potential for reduced audit scope for sensitive in information handling, because essentially the things that handle the sensitive information are your API gateway, the integration layer, and the vault uh, that, you're, that you're using. Because your, your API producer now only sees that sensitive data in an encrypted form and it limits opportunities for your API producers to leak sensitive data unintentionally, such as logging. Um, we often have uh, uh, conversations with our customers about, about uh, keeping sensitive information out of logs, and, and this is one way to do it, and just make sure that it's just not available. Um, and then, and then it, it, depending on your audit scope and, and who you're dealing with and, and what uh, uh, compliance controls you need to be concerned with, this is a potential reduction in audit scope for some of your compliance activities uh, because now anything to the right of the API gateway integration and vault transform engine does not really have access to that sensitive information. Um, and uh, because you've uh, encoded it uh, prior to uh, sending it to your API producers. 
And so with that, that is the uh, quick speed run. I, I have some command line stuff and stuff to run, but I, I uh, think that we've covered uh, that in the previous slides. Um, uh, the the essence here is is that with uh, the API gateways um, being uh, present in in all of the environments that uh, we see, you know, more and more people are investing in them. You can uh, create uh, this uh, reduced risk profile and and lower your compliance costs uh, by uh, um, encrypting the data before it gets to the API producers, and and uh, it, it creates a um, a very uh, I think valuable uh, asset in the developer's inventory. Um, and uh, for now, I'd uh, be open to any questions if there are any. Hey, uh, thank you for the talk. I really liked it. Uh, in particular, I was sitting there thinking about all the times where we had that push-pull tension between, you know, emit traces or like emit reasonable logs and like exact scenarios like this, right? So if the service is not even getting the real value, it's sort of a diff it's sort of a game changer. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there are there are some um, some folks will will. Uh, take some ground that say, hey, you shouldn't have this kind of logic in in the gateways. And and in certain scenarios, uh, I can see the case. But in this particular one, we're talking about a transformation and not logic. And, and so uh, um, there's a trend now where we're seeing more and more of the uh, integration platforms and API gateway platforms uh, creating uh, space for doing light integration work at the gateways. Um, there's been some recent announcements uh, from uh, um, the Google uh, with the Apogee products, and there's um, Red Hat has their Fuse platform. There's there's ways to do this that uh, we, we think remain consistent uh, with the principles that uh, one would want to apply. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, there are a few questions in the chat, um, and uh, if you don't mind sort of heading there and, and wrapping those up, um, I really appreciate you speaking uh, with us.